there are no leads, no wires getting in the way. It's all remote or wireless coming from his wristband. Part of that primary survey that's been done by the rescue crew here is an ultrasound. Now the sonographer here is not trained in ultrasound image interpretation, but he is trained in probe placement and image acquisition. So by using, using wireless technology, the HEMS team are able to assist in remote interpretation of the ultrasound, of the fast scan. Not just that, they're actually able to help with remote clinical decision assistance. So that, that also goes to deciding when to intervene and able to look at a response to an intervention. The vital signs are constantly being streamed. So the Hems team are on the way, the ground crew are continuing, they're interacting all the time. So despite not knowing one another, and despite the noise and challenging environment, the Hems team and this ground team are one team. They're connected in real time with physiology. They can both see the patient, they can hear what's going on. They have a shared mental model, they both know what the treatment is going to be. This is pit lane medicine. But not just this team were being responded to. In the major trauma center, the trauma team leader is actually also automatically notified. And he's able to visualize the patient and see what's going on in real time. Meanwhile, back at the blood bank, data is coming through to the blood bank immediately. We know that this patient is bleeding from non-compressible torso hemorrhage. We know that he needs definitive uh, surgery or definitive hemorrhage control. Now that may be uh, interventional radiology, it may be a temporizing remote procedure, it may be a trauma laparotomy. Blood products are the currency that allow shocked trauma patients to get to the trauma center alive, or gives them a higher likelihood of that. Blood products will give a person a longer chance of survival before definitive care. But how are we going to get these blood products to the patient rapidly? Hem screws are limited in the blood pressure, blood product type and amount that they can store and carry. So we need new technology. And drone technology can help answer that question. Drones are improving all the time in the distance they can fly, in the amount of products they can carry, and the types of products they can carry. Okay. I will keep pressing, but let's go. Okay. So, so as the data keeps streaming through, the indication is that he has coagulopathy of trauma. We know that he's got clinical signs of shock. He's bleeding. The, thr the trauma lastogram indicates hyperfibrinolysis. In the future, we'll be able to do a personalized pre-hospital MTP. The HEMS team are on the way. You can hear them coming overhead. It's quite distracting. It's noisy. It, there's a potential for chaos. When they arrive, interactions can be strained. They can be difficult. It is not always easy.
It's just taking slightly longer than usual, and that's normal. We're just looking for a landing spot. Hmm. <laughs> and hopefully they'll find that spot very quickly. Not to worry. Okay. We have a slight technical problem. That's okay. Okay, let's rewind. The boss of the helicopter was the drone that was arriving. Okay, so the drone has arrived from the trauma center. The patient has been extricated from the car. They will do their we also know through the interaction from the HEMS team to the grant team, there's a suite of procedures and interventions that are going to occur. If they know what that is, they're getting the patient ready. They will continue to do their resuscitation. In the trauma center, the trauma team leader, and the trauma team, in fact, can see how this is going. They know what is the vitals are like, they know what the data is. They can prepare, there is no miscommunication. Miscommunication is prone to error, it's prone to delay, it's prone to indecision, and affects patients. And at some point we'll get the helicopter crew will arrive, they're obviously having too many donuts, but that's okay. What you want to do now is just train, train your eyes on the resuscitation and just make sure they're doing it correctly. If they're doing anything incorrectly, just shut out. Okay. I am running out of time, but that's okay. <laughs> 